I'm Derek Walker, the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. We're in a series called Christian Foundations. And uh, today we want to talk about developing a devotional life and how we can receive our transformation from God. And uh, the whole series is, is about getting our Christian life established on a firm foundation. Um, often people are aware of different doctrines, but it, it seems a bit chaotic. And in fact, if you were to build a house just in any order, um, you'd be in a mess. You have to build from the bottom up. And that's what we want to do, is establish the proper foundational teaching in your life. The foundation is absolutely essential. Uh, and the key issue in building a house, the first issue, is to build it on the right foundation. Otherwise, it's just not going to last. It's going to collapse. Uh, when any pressure is put on it. And so we need to build uh, the house of our life on the rock, the rock foundation, and uh, something that's utterly dependable, immovable. And the Bible says that that, that rock is Jesus Christ himself. Uh, do you remember when uh, Simon Peter, um, Jesus asked them, you know, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And, and here, it's a play on words here, because the word Peter... Petros is like a small pebble. But then when Jesus said, uh, on this rock, uh, that's Petra, which is a large, strong rock. And he was talking about himself. On this rock, I will build my church. In other words, we are to be built upon the rock of Jesus himself. And that's what happened to Peter, because it was revealed to him by God who Jesus was, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And once Jesus is revealed to us and we embrace that revelation, we trust ourselves to him, we, we receive him as our Lord and Savior, then, as it were, our, we've taken the first step and, and of our life to be built on that rock. We ourselves now have received the rock and we are now starting to be built on a rock. And then there's a process, and that's the foundation, Christ himself, who he is. And, uh, and Corinthians says, no other foundation can anyone lay except that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. But now we need to build our life on that foundation. Uh, we have the salvation of our soul, but now we need to build our Christian life on that foundation. And the Bible says that the way we do that is by, by uh, submitting and obeying certain foundational teachings. They are the, 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 how we build our house up from the bottom. It's, it's these foundational teachings must be established first and then we can build up the higher other revelations. But first we must have these correct foundational doctrines. They're called the elementary doctrines of Christ. And we have to submit and obey those before we can go any higher. And that's the ones that we're talking about. And um, we read about them in Hebrews chapter 6. It says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, maturity, but going up higher, not laying again the foundation. And now these are the foundational doctrines. There's seven of them that he describes. And in this series, we're going through these seven foundations because it's pointless trying to go on to higher stuff unless you've actually got these foundational doctrines in place in your heart and life. Not laying again the foundation of, number one, repentance from dead works. Number two, faith toward God. Number three, of doctrine. Number four, of baptisms. Of five, of laying on of hands. Of six, of the resurrection of the dead. And seven, eternal judgment. And so we're, we're still focused on the first two, which are the foundational ones, the fundamental ones. Uh, because the repentance from dead works and faith toward God. That's our, our, the, the core of our relationship with God. And if we're to build our whole life on Christ, 
we must cultivate a strong devotional life or with, with Christ, knowing Christ, loving Him, putting down our roots of faith deep into God and turning away from our old life of depending on ourself. And so if we are to truly implement the faith toward God and repentance from dead works, that really requires us putting, uh, cultivating a deep devotional life with the Lord. And so the whole Christian life is about love. It's about loving God. We, we've been brought into a new covenant and the dynamic of this covenant is, is, is fellowship with God, is, is the love of God, is receiving love from God and giving love to God. That's what it's all about. That's what the new covenant brings us into because actually that's the life of the Trinity himself, the Father and Son and Spirit loving one another. And in a way, this new covenant brings us into that fellowship life of the, of the Trinity. And so the commandment of the covenant is, is love. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And, and so if we use the romantic analogy, what, what does it mean to love someone? You want to spend time with them. You, you want to cultivate that love. You want to enjoy their company and talk with them, get to know them, develop a close relationship with them. And, and so if we love God, and we want to deepen our love relationship with God. We will spend time listening to him, speaking to him. Uh, our whole Christian life, actually, of including loving people, is really an overflow of our loving God. And so we, we put down our roots in God by developing this devotional life uh, of, of, of listening to God, uh, praying to God, hearing him speak to us through his word, that is where we cultivate our faith toward God and where we learn to, to repent from the old life. And so part of loving God is reading the Bible. The Bible is God's word to us. And when we come to the Bible, we should pray, God, please speak to me. As I read the, the word, speak to me. And God will speak to you through his word. Uh, Lord, show me what you're like. Show me what you want. Show me what you like. Show me what you dislike. I want to know you more. I want to know your ways. Reveal yourself to me. And if you have that attitude, God will surely speak to you. So spend some time every day reading the Bible and ask God to speak to you through it. You know, a good way to start is the Gospel of John, is my, my personal thing. You know, at least a chapter a day. And, 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 and make that part of your devotional time. We used to call it a quiet time with the Lord. It doesn't have to be quiet. You can shout if you want. But it's time that you spend with God. That needs to come first. And uh, you find a Bible translation that you understand well. I use the New King James, mostly myself. But uh, look for promises. God will promise things to you through the Bible. And, uh, and look for commands that he things that he tells you to do and the commands are for your benefits as well and um, when you see clearly what God's asking you to do then do it and this is part of your relationship with God that is God's got, got you'll find God's will generally from his word and he'll never lead you different in disagreement to his word and and he will shine his light on things that he wants you to change things he wants you to repent of, things he wants you to confess to, to God and ask him to forgive you. And again, you have, have fellowship with God around his word. And also spend time talking to God. He's your best friend. He loves you. So, so tell him everything that's on your heart. Share with him. Uh, come to him in prayer and ask for his help. His ears are open to you. It says in Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing. Don't fellowship with your doubts and your fears and your worries, but fellowship with God, even about your problems. He says, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. You know, a good acrostic you could use to help you in your prayer life as you get started would be ACTS. That means A stands for adoration. Start with adoration. Start with praise and worship. Tell God how wonderful he is, like lovers do. 
rave on God, tell him how wonderful he is. And then C, acts, C is confession. And if it, the Bible says that if we, you know, don't, look, don't go looking for your sins, but where your conscience convicts you, just confess it to God if you've sinned. It, that 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so if you sin against someone you love, um, you want to put it right. You want to restore that fellowship. And so if you've sinned, all sin is against God ultimately. You'll want to put that right. You want to keep that closeness with God. And then T, Acts. T is thanksgiving. Acknowledge God as the source of every good thing in your life. Never take him for granted. Even the, the basic blessings of life, don't take those things for granted. Never take the one you love for granted, but appreciate all they do for you. So make sure you have a thankful heart to God. Thank him for everything he's done for you and everything that he will do for you. Thank him for your salvation. And then S, Acts, also be unselfish in your prayers. In other words, S is for supplication. Pray, by all means, tell him your needs and ask for his help, but also pray for others too. Pray for, the, for, the, for your nation. Pray for your church. Pray for your family and friends. Pray for people's salvation. Make supplication to God. Let your heart go out to God. Talk to him as your heavenly father, the one who loves you. And, and be honest before him. And also be willing to let him change you. You can pray any time, of course, but uh, it's good to set aside a special time uh, that where you're not disturbed to really just focus on God. That is the most important time of your day. And so through reading the Bible and through prayer, we draw closer to God and learn to live on his, in his presence and learn to deepen our life of faith in God. And in that time where we're spending time with God, just in holiness before God, he can then wash away the old life from us. We, we, we find ourselves being able to repent of those dead works, those, those old ways of living, and embrace the new way of living in Christ. And so our devotional life consists of prayer and the Word of God, but it also consists of our public worship in church. You know, part of our honoring God in our life is to worship regularly at a Bible-believing church that honors Jesus Christ. Our attitude should be like in Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We should, we should be excited to go to church. You know, we, we start off as a spiritual baby. And babies don't do well on their own. They, they need others around them to look after them, to encourage them. And, and if we're going to grow into strong Christians, we can't do it by ourselves. We need fellowship with one another. And, and to, to learn more about this new life. We are not meant to live the Christian life alone, but in fellowship with other believers. And that we're in the family of God. We're in the body of Christ. A cell, in the, if it's disconnected from the rest of the body, is going to die very quickly. And so we need to, to understand that God has not made us to be on our own. We need to be part of a family of God. It, one example is like a, a fireplace with lots of burning coals. And there's a story of a, of a vicar who, who, visit, who went to visit one of his deacons who hadn't been in church for about six weeks. And, and the deacon was expecting a telling off and uh, they just sat and had a cup of coffee and, and the vicar said nothing about it. They just had a chat. But um, uh, early in the conversation, he just went to the fireplace, took a tong and took the burning coal out of the fire and just put it on the piece of marble in front. And as the conversation went on, First of all, it still was quite hot, but after a bit, it just got cooler and cooler. And by the end of the conversation, it was cold. And of course, the message was, when we are out of fellowship with other believers, we're on our own. We uh, gradually get colder and colder. Our spiritual temperature goes down because we, we need one another. And so, after he, as he went to go, uh, the man said, thank you, Vicar, for your most eloquent sermon. He had said nothing, but the illustration said it all. 
I'm also reminded of what Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 8. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And you know, um, animals protect themselves from predators like lions by, by going in large packs, because there's safety in those numbers. They, they, they are protected within that pack. Um, the ones that the, the lion can, can devour are those um, who, for whatever reason, get separated from the pack, and then they are easily, easily um, captured. And so be part of a fellowship, be part of a church. As Hebrews 10.25 says, not forsaking the gathering of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. Even in the first century, people were backsliding and, and stopping going to church. They thought it was an optional extra. But in the Bible, it's commanded that we gather together. This is the milk of the word. We can't expect to make spiritual progress. And sometimes people think, you know, they can be advanced spiritually just on their own. They can get great revelations. But actually, the basic milk of the word is that we should uh, honor God by being part of a church. And um, it says the first Christians, they when in Acts 2, when they heard the gospel, it says it describes their life. It says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and prayers. They, they did it together. And that's God's vision for us. And so by cultivating this devotional life of prayer, the Bible, church, we are... Uh, uh, we're obeying, really, these first two foundations. We're developing our faith in God and we're re turning away, we're repenting from a life lived independently from God. And, and this is godliness, a, go a God-orientated life. And godliness results in holiness. Holiness is, is our submission to God and how much God's presence fills us and controls us. And so the more we have faith toward God and repentance from our dead works, the more of God's presence comes into our life. And that brings holiness and transformation. And that's what I want to go on to talk about now, how God wants to transform us. You see, when we come into God's presence, as, as we spend time with Him in His presence, God actually changes us from the inside out. He transforms us. The word there is metamorphosis, and, the, and we use that to describe how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. What actually the butterfly is, is within, is that li new life within. And the metamorphosis is that new life coming, coming forth. And so it is that we have the life of God in our spirit. We have the love of God in our spirit. We have the wisdom of God in our spirit. And... Metamorphosis is the process whereby that, that life that is within us in Christ comes into our heart and changes our heart. And once that happens, then we can express it in our life. And so in our quiet times, in our devotional times, we're, we're opening our heart to God and allowing that transformation to take place in our heart. And then as we go into our life, we can put the Word of God into action. And so with transformation is being changed on the inside so that we can live it out in our life. And when we do that, then we grow spiritually. Well, I want to talk about transformation. Uh, the, the first picture of it is water being changed into wine in uh, John chapter 2, that miracle. See, we are the water pots full of just water. That's our hearts in our natural state and to cut a long story short with that miracle the key was that when Mary asked Jesus said to Jesus they have no wine Jesus seemed to say no he said what's that got to do with me but what's really going on there is actually if you read Mary is in charge of the feast arrangement and she is telling Jesus there's a need here but you know it's not enough to tell Jesus of your need. What, what Jesus was saying to Mary is, what's that got to do with me? In other words, 
If you want me to do something about it, you must give me the authority to do it. You must surrender the situation to me. And Mary got that message and she immediately said to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. That shows that Mary was in authority. And now she delegates the authority to Jesus and he, she gives him the authority to move in that situation in the same way in your life. Even when you were born again, that's what happened. You gave God the authority. You didn't just say, oh God, I feel empty. You actually said, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my savior. Change me on the inside. And you gave him permission and by his spirit, he came, changed the water of your spirit into wine. Uh, and, and the same idea works in our transformation. We have to come before God and believe in God and ask him, give him that permission to change our water into wine. And so if there's a part of your heart that isn't in the presence of God, that, that is, is, is like stagnant water, you can bring it to God and you can ask him to change it to wine. You can submit to that, your heart to him and ask him to fill you. And he will change your water into wine. And that's transformation. He wants to fill your heart, if you let him, with his love, with his joy, with his peace. And, uh, and so you are also awesome in your spirit. The love of God is in you. The joy of God is in you. But we need to learn now how to let that life come forth from our spirit into our soul, into our heart. Romans 12, 2 talks about this. It says, don't be conformed to the world. Don't, let, don't be changed from, by outward pressures, but rather be changed by the inward life of God inside you. But be transformed. There's the word, metamorphosis. Be transformed by this inner life coming out into your heart. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so you see, as you... As you renew your mind by the word of God to who you are in Christ. You're a new creation. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. And as you see who you are, as you read the word of God, so, th and th uh, so that love of God and that life of God comes into your heart. And basically, he says, let's, let's, let's read this now in Romans 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable worship. And here this is talking about, in our devotional time, this is the repentance and our faith toward God. He says, turn away from living your own life where you're in control and now surrender your heart, surrender your body to God to do his will. And when you start to do that, you set in motion the, the process of transformation. Because he goes on and says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as you surrender to God, what is actually happening is that the, that the life of God now starts to come through. And you start to see the, the potentiality and the reality of who you are. And as you uh, embrace that, you are transformed by the renewing of your mind and, and, the, and the love of God and so forth starts to come into your heart. And it says, once you've got, once you see who you are in Christ, then it says, then you can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And what that's talking about is your actions. Once you've got, once you know who you are in Christ and the reality of that is coming into your heart, now you can act on that. You can, you can act on the will of God. You can release the will of God. You can do what God is telling you to do because you'll have the strength in your heart to do it. And you will demonstrate in your life the perfect will of God. And that is, then the blessing of God is released in your life. That's the process of transformation. 2 Corinthians 3 also talks about this. He says, when one somebody turns to the Lord, and that's again, that's the repentance and faith toward God. You're turning away from your old life and you're turning to God. It says the veil is taken away. There's a veil over your heart. But as you turn to God, God removes that veil and you begin to see clearly who you are in Christ. 
And it says, now the Lord is the Spirit, the, the Spirit of God flowing out from your spirit. He's the dynamic force that makes this happen. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the, Lord of the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The life of God flowing out your spirit sets you free from the sin nature. We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit. And what he's saying is as you look into the Word of God and as you look to God and you see the glory of God shining out of you from the Spirit, so it says the veil is removed and, and you, you, you are aware of the Spirit of God working in you. Then it says transformation takes place. Your mind is renewed and then the transformation, that life that's in you, starts coming forth. And the Spirit of God within you sets you free from what held you back before. And you are changed on the inside. And he says we are changed to be more, more and more like Jesus from glory to glory. Next time we're going to see this transformation in the book of James too, where this man looks in the mirror and he sees who he really is and then he does it. And as he does it, he's blessed. And God wants to transform us. What that means is change our whole way of living and so that the life that's in the spirit through the new birth is now released into our heart and then lived out in our life. That is what Christianity is all about. It's not about rules and regulations. It's about knowing God in the Spirit and drawing upon that new life and living out that new life. I want to encourage you to get two of my CD series, which are my favorites really, that build a strong foundation for your faith through understanding our covenant with God. The blood covenant, and also the covenant names of God. If you have this in your heart, you will have such confidence in your covenant with God. Each series has eight CDs in, and uh, it will strengthen your life greatly. Thank you for watching. You can watch more of our teachings on our Oxford Bible Church Roku channel and Derek Walker YouTube channel. You're most welcome to join us at our church services which are every Sunday at 11am and 6pm at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, OX3 7QH. You can order CDs, DVDs, books and other great products from our online shop at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.